Mikhail Bulgakov. Mikhail Afanasyevich Bulgakov was a Russian writer, medical doctor and playwright active in the first half of the 20th century. He is best known for his novel The Master and Margarita, published posthumously, which has been called one of the masterpieces of the 20th century. Mikhail Bulgakov was born on in Kiev, Kiev Governorate of the Russian Empire, into a Russian family. He was one of the seven children of Afanasy Ivanovich Bulgakov, a former teacher. Both of his grandfathers were clergymen in the Russian Orthodox Church. Afanasy Bulgakov was born in Bryansk Oblast, Russia, where his father was a priest, and he moved to Kiev to study in the academy. Varvara Bulgakov was born in Karachev, Russia. According to Edith C. Haber, in his autobiographical remarks Bulgakov stated that she was a descendant of Tartar hordes, which supposedly influenced some of his works. However, there is no mention of it in Bulgakov's collection of works, so the source of the claims is unclear. From childhood Bulgakov was drawn to theater. At home, he wrote comedies, which his brothers and sisters acted out. In 1901 Bulgakov joined the first Kiev gymnasium, where he developed an interest in Russian and European literature, theater and opera. The teachers of the gymnasium exerted a great influence on the formation of his literary taste. After the death of his father in 1907, Mikhail's mother, a well-educated and extraordinarily diligent person, assumed responsibility for his education. After graduation from the gymnasium in 1909, Bulgakov entered the medical faculty of Kiev University, which he finished with special commendation. He then took a position as a physician at the Kiev Military Hospital. In 1913, Bulgakov married Tatiana Lapa. At the outbreak of the First World War, he volunteered with the Red Cross as a medical doctor and was sent to Red Lido the Front, where he was badly injured at least twice. Bulgakov's suffering from these wounds had deleterious long-term effects. To suppress chronic pain, especially in the abdomen, he injected himself with morphine. Over the next year his addiction grew stronger. In 1918, he abandoned morphine and never used it again. Morphine, a book released in 1926, is his account of that trying period. In 1916, Bulgakov graduated from the medical department of Kiev University and after serving as a surgeon at Chernovitsy Hospital, was appointed provincial physician to Smolensk province. His life in those days is reflected in his A Country Doctor's Notebook. In September 1917 Bulgakov was moved to the hospital in Vyazhma, near Smolensk. In February 1918, he returned to Kiev, Ukraine, where he opened a private practice at his home at Andrei Yevsky Descent, 13. Here he lived through the civil war and witnessed ten coups. Successive governments drafted the young doctor into their service while two of his brothers were serving in the White Army against the Bolsheviks. In February 1919 he was mobilized as an army physician by the Ukrainian People's Army and assigned to the Northern Caucasus. There, he became seriously ill with typhus and barely survived. In the Caucasus he started working as a journalist, but when he and others were invited to return as doctors by the French and German governments, Bulgakov was refused permission to leave Russia because of the typhus. That was when he last saw his family, after the civil war and the rise of the Soviets most of his relatives emigrated to Paris. After illness Bulgakov abandoned his career as a doctor for that of a writer. In his autobiography, he recalled how he started writing. Once in 1919 when I was traveling at night by train I wrote a short story. In the town where the train stopped, I took the story to the publisher of the newspaper who published the story. His first book was an almanac of Foyton's called Future Perspectives, written and published the same year. In December 1919 Bulgakov moved to Vladikovkos. He wrote and saw his first two plays, Self-Defense and the Durban Brothers, being produced for the city theater stage with great success. After traveling through the Caucasus, Bulgakov headed for Moscow, intending to remain here forever. It was difficult to find work in the capital, but he was appointed secretary to the literary section of Glav Politprovet. In September 1921 Bulgakov and his wife settled near Patriarch's Bonds, on Bolshaya Sadovaya Street, 10. To make a living, he started working as a correspondent and Foyden's writer for the newspapers Udok, Krasnaya Panorama and Nukanuni, based in Berlin. For the Almanac Nedra, he wrote Diaboliad, The Fatal Eggs, and Heart of a Dog, works that combine bitter satire and elements of science fiction and were concerned with the fate of a scientist and the misuse of his discovery. The most significant features of Bulgakov's satire, such as a skillful blending of fantastic and realistic elements, grotesque situations, and a concern with important ethical issues, had already taken shape. 
Thesi features were developed further in his most famous novel. Between 1922 and 1926 Bulgakov wrote several plays, none of which were allowed production at the time. The Run, treating the horrors of a fratricidal war, was personally banned by Joseph Stalin after the Glav Repertkum decided that it glorified emigration and white generals. In 1924 Bulgakov divorced his first wife and next year married Lubov Belazerskaya. When one of Moscow's theater directors severely criticized Bulgakov, Stalin personally protected him, saying that a writer of Bulgakov's quality was above party words like left and right. Stalin found work for the playwright at a small Moscow theater, and next the Moscow Art Theater. On October 5, 1926, The Days of the Turbans, the play which continued the theme of the White Guard was premiered at the Met. Stalin liked it very much and reportedly saw it at least 15 times. Ivan Vasilyevich, Last Days, and Don Quixote were banned. The premiere of another, Moliere, in which Bulgakov plunged into fairy Paris of the 17th century, received bad reviews in Pravda and the play was withdrawn from the theater repertoire. In 1928, Zuika's apartment and the Purple Island were staged in Moscow. Both comedies were accepted by public with great enthusiasm, but critics again gave them bad reviews. By March 1929 Bulgakov's career was ruined when government censorship stopped the publication of any of his work and his plays. In despair, Bulgakov first wrote a personal letter to Joseph Stalin, then on March 28, 1930, a letter to the Soviet government that he requested permission to emigrate if the Soviet Union could not find use for him as a writer. In his autobiography, Bulgakov claimed to have written to Stalin out of desperation and mental anguish, never intending to post the letter. He received a phone call directly from the Soviet leader, who asked the writer whether he really desired to leave the Soviet Union. Bulgakov replied that a Russian writer cannot live outside of his homeland. Stalin gave him permission to continue working at the art theater. On May 10, 1930, he rejoined the theater as stage director's assistant. Later, he adapted Gogol's Dead Souls for stage. In 1932, Bulgakov married for the third time to Yelena Shilovskaya who would prove to be inspiration for the character Margarita in his most famous novel, which he started working on in 1928. During the last decade of his life, Bulgakov continued to work on The Master and Margarita, wrote plays, critical works, stories, and made several translations and dramatizations of novels, librettos. Many of them were not published, other ones were torn to pieces by critics. Much of his work stayed in his desk drawer for several decades. The refusal of the authorities to let him work in the theater and his desire to see his family who were living abroad, whom he had not seen for many years, led him to seek drastic measures. Despite his new work, the projects he worked on at the theater were often prohibited, and he was strained and unhappy. In the late 1930s he joined the Bolshoi Theater as a librettist and consultant. He left after perceiving that none of his works would be produced there. Stalin's favor protected Bulgakov from arrests and execution but he could not get his writing published. His novels and dramas were subsequently banned and, for the second time, Bulgakov's career as playwright was ruined. When his last play Batum, a complimentary portrayal of Stalin's early revolutionary days, was banned before rehearsals, Bulgakov requested permission to leave the country but was refused. In poor health, Bulgakov devoted his last years to what he called his sunset novel. The years 1937 to 1939 were stressful for Bulgakov, veering from glimpse of optimism, believing the publication of his masterpiece could still be possible, to bouts of depression, when he felt as if there were no hope. On June 15, 1938, when the manuscript was nearly finished, Bulgakov wrote in a letter to his wife, in front of me 327 pages of the manuscript. The most important remains, editing, and it's going to be hard, I will have to pay close attention to details maybe even rewrite some things. What's its future? You ask? I don't know. Possibly, you will store the manuscript in one of the drawers, next to my killed place, and occasionally it will be in your thoughts. Then again, you don't know the future. My own judgment of the book is already me and I think it truly deserves being hidden away in the darkness of some chest. In 1939 Mikhail Bulgakov organized a private reading of The Master and Margarita to his close circle of friends. Yelena Bulgakov remembered 30 years later, when he finally finished reading that night, he said, Well, tomorrow I am taking the novel to the publisher. And everyone was silent, everyone sat paralyzed. Everything scared them. P. Later at the door fearfully tried to explain to him that trying to publish the novel would cause terrible things, she wrote in her diary.
In the last month of his life, friends and relatives were constantly on duty at his bedside. On March 10, 1940, Mikhail Afanasyevich Bulgakov died. On March 11, a civil funeral was held in the building of the Union of Soviet Writers. Before the funeral, the Moscow sculptor Sergei Merkurov removed the death mask from his face. Mikhail Bulgakov died from nephrosclerosis on March 10, 1940. He was buried in the Novodevichy Cemetery in Moscow. His father had died of the same disease, and from his youth Bulgakov had guessed his future mortal diagnosis. During his life, Bulgakov was best known for the plays he contributed to Konstantin Stanislavsky's and Nemirovich Danchenko's Moscow Art Theater. Stalin was known to be fond of the play Days of the Turbans, which was based on Bulgakov's novel The White Guard. His dramatization of Moliere's life in the Cabal of Hypocrites is still performed by the Moscow Art Theater. Even after his plays were banned from the theaters, Bulgakov wrote a comedy about Ivan the Terrible's visit into 1930s Moscow. His play Batum about the early years of Stalin was prohibited by the premier himself. Bulgakov began writing prose with the White Guard, a novel about a life of a white army officer's family in Civil War Kiev. In the mid 1920s, he came to admire the works of H. G. Wells and wrote several stories with elements of science fiction, notably The Fatal Eggs and Heart of a Dog. He intended to compile his stories of themed 20s that were based on his work as a country doctor in 1916 to 1918 into a collection titled Notes of a Young Doctor, but he died before he could publish it. The Fatal Eggs tells of the events of a Professor Persikoff, who, in experimentation with eggs, discovers a red ray that accelerates growth in living organisms. At the time, an illness passes through the chickens of Moscow, killing most of them, and to remedy the situation, the Soviet government puts the ray into Yusita Farm. Due to a mix-up in egg shipments, the professor ends up with chicken eggs, while the government-run farm receives the shipment of ostrich, snake and crocodile eggs ordered by the professor. The mistake is not discovered until the eggs produce giant monstrosities that wreak havoc in the suburbs off Moscow and kill most of the workers on the farm. The propaganda machine turns on Persikov, distorting his nature in the same way his innocent tampering created the monsters. This tale of a bungling government earned Bulgakov his label of counter-revolutionary. Heart of a Dog features a professor who implants human testicles and a pituitary gland into a dog named Sherik. The dog becomes more and more human as time passes, resulting in all manner of chaos. The tale can be read as a critical satire of liberal nihilism and the communist mentality. It contains a few bold hints to the communist leadership, for example the name of the drunkard donor of the human organ implants is Chugunkin which can be seen as a parody on the name of Stalin. It was adapted as a comic opera called The Murder of Comrade Sherrick by William Bergsma in 1973. In 1988 an award-winning movie version Sabatya Serdsa was produced by Len Film, starring Yevgeny Yevstigniev, Roman Kartsev, and Vladimir Tolokonnikov. The Master and Margarita became the best-known novel by Bulgakov. He began writing in 1928, but the novel was finally published by his widow only in 1966, 26 years after his death. The book contributed a number of sayings to the Russian language, for example, Manuscripts don't burn in second grade freshness. A destroyed manuscript of the master is an important element of the plot. Bulgakov had to rewrite the novel from memory after he burned the draft manuscript in 1930, as he could not see a future as a writer in the Soviet Union at a time of widespread political repression. The novel is a critique of Soviet society and its literary establishment. The work is appreciated for its philosophical undertones and for its high artistic level thanks to its picturesque descriptions, lyrical fragments and style. It is a frame narrative involving two characteristically related time periods, or plot lines, a retelling Bulgakov's interpretation of New Testament and a description of contemporary Moscow. The novel begins with Satan visiting Moscow in the 1930s, joining a conversation between a critic and a poet debating the existence of Jesus Christ and the devil. It develops into an all-embracing indictment of the corruption, greed narrow-mindedness, and widespread paranoia of Soviet Russia. The novel was completely published more than 25 years after Bulgakov's death. A story within the story portrays the interrogation of Jesus Christ by Pontius Pilate and the crucifixion. The Mikhail Bulgakov Museum in Kiev has been converted to a literary museum with some rooms devoted to the writer, as well as some to his works. This was his family home, the model for the House of the Turban family in his play. In Moscow, Two museums honor the memory of Mikhail Bulgakov and the Master and Margarita. 
Both are situated in Bulgakov's old apartment building on Bolshaya Sadovaya Street near 10, in which parts of the Master and Margarita are set. Since the 1980s, the building has become a gathering spot for Bulgakov's fans, as well as Moscow-based Satanist groups, and had various kinds of graffiti scrawled on the walls. The numerous paintings, quips, and drawings were completely whitewashed in 2003. Previously the best drawings were kept as the walls were repainted, so that several layers of different colored paints could be seen around the best drawings. There is a rivalry between the two museums, mainly maintained by the later established official museum M.A. Bulgakov, which invariably presents itself as the first and only memorial museum of Mikhail Bulgakov in Moscow. The Bulgakov House is situated at the ground floor. This museum has been established as a private initiative on May 15, 2004. The Bulgakov House contains personal belongings, photos, and several exhibitions related to Bulgakov's life and his different works. Various poetic and literary events are often held, and excursions to Bulgakov's Moscow are organized, some of which are animated with living characters of the Master and Margarita. The Bulgakov House also runs the theater M.A. Bulgakov with 126 seats, and the Cafe 302 Bis. In the same building, in apartment number 50 on the fourth floor, is a second museum that keeps alive the memory of Bulgakov, the Museum M.A. Bulgakov. This second museum is a government initiative, and was founded on March 26, 2007. The Museum M.A. Bulgakov contains personal belongings, photos, and several exhibitions related to Bulgakov's life and his different works. Various poetic and literary events are often held. After graduating from the medical school in 1909, he spent the early days of his career as a venereologist, rather than pursuing his goal of being a pediatrician, as syphilis was highly prevalent during those times. It was during those early years that he described the affectation and characteristics of syphilis affecting bones. He described the abnormal and concomitant change of the outline of the crests of the shin bones with a pathological worm eaten like appearance and creation of abnormal osteophytes in the bones of those suffering from later stages of syphilis. This became known as Bulgakov's sign and is commonliest in the former Soviet states, but is known as the bandy legs sign in the West. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.